All right, everyone, we're going to get, uh, get rolling. Uh, we've got an action-packed two days. My name is Christopher Stevens. I'm the Executive Director of the Ontario Sustainable Energy Association. And I'd like to say thank you to all of you for joining us and uh, also to a few of our partners, the Association of Power Producers of Ontario, the Community Power Fund, Photosensitive, who has done a, a really cool and interesting exhibit at the front, the Toronto Renewable Energy Cooperative, uh, the World Wind Energy Association, Stefan uh, Zanger is here from Germany and has been working with us on this conference for the last few years and of course hosted the World Wind Energy Conference where we posed the idea, should Ontario have a Green Energy Act, and, uh, and York University. Now, uh, I'm going to try to set a little bit of context and then hand over the, the mic to my colleague David Dio, who's the chair of the Ontario Sustainable Energy Association, and then we'll get rolling into the, into the keynotes for the day. Now, this slide is, uh, uh, has a graphic that is on the front of most of our brochures, and it, it captures the fact that OSEA isn't just about wind, it isn't just about solar or biogas, it's not just about geothermal or hydro. Um, we, we look at integrated energy systems, and we also look at things um, from the perspective that both community and the private sector are important and that they should be working together, that we should be growing the pie and creating opportunities. Now, the usual question that I ask is, what's missing? What's missing from this image? Anybody tell me? People, right. People are missing. Now, some of you have been at some of our workshops lately, so you know the answer already, but, uh, <laughs> but people are missing, and people are the most important part of what we're trying to do. You know, we get caught up with the different technologies and the technologies that we think are cool in our lives, like our iPhones and other gadgets, but it is culture that is our most powerful technology. And we need to understand the underlying principles and values that define us and that we use to perceive the world in order to make better decisions. Now, over the next couple of days, I really want you to, um, to ask questions, to challenge, to get engaged. The way that we've set up the program is really um, to maximize the interaction between you, the audience, and the panel of experts that we've brought together. It's easy to make assumptions that we're talking about the same things. We're all in the same industry, or we're all interested in sustainability, or uh, moving towards a cleaner, greener, more prosperous future, but um, sometimes we may be using the same language or the same words, but not actually talking about the same thing. It's sort of like these two in the boat together. They're both hungry, right? But if the cow knew that this guy was thinking about eating something, that he was uh, thinking about eating him, he probably wouldn't uh, be saying, hey, yeah, let's work together and figure out how we're going to feed ourselves. We need to make sure that we challenge, that we, that we really understand where things are going. What do we mean by sustainable energy? What do we mean by improving the feed-in tariff or reforming it? What do we mean by making sure that we move towards a, a more green uh, energy system? What do we mean by community power, or commercial power for that matter? and recognize that this situation that we're in is really complex. This is some research I did for my master's looking at social friction in Ontario's electricity sector. Social friction being nimbyism or conflict between the, the system as it evolves. Each of those little red and orange dots are points of conflict that are, that are in existence right now between those who want a centralized and a decentralized system, those who want a regulated versus a deregulated, those who believe in renewables versus traditional power, those who are running into barriers or frustrations with the different ministries or agencies like Hydro One. If we focus on just the processes, on just the rules, we're gonna get ourselves into trouble and that's partly why we are where we are now. We need to understand the underlying values and principles so that when we're faced by things that we don't fully understand, we can make good choices. And today and over and, and tomorrow, I hope that you think about that. What are the, what are the key things that we're looking at? What's the underlying values? What, what are the drivers that we need to, uh, to consider? But also, what's the vision that we're working towards? And there's all kinds of barriers that are preventing us from moving forward. There's policy and regulatory barriers. There's the knowledge barrier. There's equity issues. Uh, we've got entrenched interests who uh, you know, don't want us to take away their market share, right? You know, if, if, you, if you had control of the market, do you really want to give it up? There's project financing questions. But the big one, again, is our culture. If we don't change the way that we look at our system, if we don't think about how we want to get towards an, a sustainable energy system, then we're just going to keep running into walls. So at the end of uh, the next two days, I hope we come out with some really great ideas from both you and from our expert panels um, to formulate and to really drive home what our roadmap to success looks like. What does Green Energy Ontario 2.0 look like? How does the commercial and the community sector need to work together? How do we need to bring thermal and electricity into the same discussion so that we're not doing um, you know, siloed approaches, which again causes problems but also reduces the opportunities that are there for us.